Hey y'all, hey! Do you want to learn how to make your very own LED Christmas stocking using dye sublimation? Well, stay tuned! In today's tutorial, I will be showing you how to do that. Hey y'all, it's your girl Javaya and welcome back. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create your own Christmas stocking template. You can achieve this with any Christmas stocking that you have. Today we are going to be using the LED Christmas stocking. I'm also going to be sublimating one as well. To begin, I am starting off in Silhouette Studio. I have Silhouette Studio Business Edition. On my screen, you can see that I have my design, an image of my stocking, and then the outline. I also have some text here and some dimensions. I did not design this stocking. My graphic designer, Jazz, did for me. But I am going to add in some text here. And I'm going to show you how to go from this to this. The first thing you want to do is take a picture of your Christmas stocking. It is important to have a dark background. So I would say use some black car stock or if you have, you know, a really dark surface to use that so that it will be easy for you to remove it. Essentially, we will need a picture of the stocking with a transparent background. I use remove.bg to remove backgrounds. Some people use other programs such as Silhouette Studio. I typically just always go to remove.bg. Once you take your picture, you want to remove the background. Once you remove the background, you want to import that picture into your creative software. And you will have something like this, okay? So from here, what you would do is right click your image. You will head over to the trace panel. Select trace area. Then you will trace the area that you want. The threshold you want to increase it until the entire stocking is yellow okay so from here I'm going to click on right here where it says trace style I'm going to click on trace outer edge because I only want the outer portion of our picture I'm going to drag this out the way and that is all that is all to it now each stocking will have different dimensions so you want to make sure you measure your stockings in its entirety the stocking shape is it is not so easy to work with so I will measure my uh, Christmas stocking with the measuring tape I will measure the inside here the inside here and then the entire height okay and to confirm that I have accurate measurements I will take a rectangle draw it out up oh, I don't have no color fill let me fill in the color real quick let me just do white whoops hold on let me click on this okay and then let me just fill in some color okay so I'll just draw a rectangle like this then I will change the width to the dimensions that I have after I measured my actual stocking. So let's say that this part of my stocking measured eight inches, right? I'm going to make the width of my rectangle eight inches, right? Or let's make it slightly larger. Let's do 8.2, 8 8 right? Because we want to give ourselves some extra bleed room. So 8.2, I will bring my rectangle here and I would adjust the stocking 
to that 8.2 okay now let's say that the height measured um, let's say 15 inches right so we're going to change the height to 15.2 Let's do 17 so it don't look so crazy. Okay. So let's say that the height was 17 inches. We made it 17.2. Let's say that the inside of our stocking right here from this end to the foot measured, I don't know, let's say 13 inches. I will take this rectangle, duplicate it, then I will change the dimensions to 13.2, okay? And I'm not off, I'm not that off. I will use this as a guide, these rectangles as a guide to size my stocking properly, like so. And that is all. Let's say that you want to add a picture right inside so let me see if I can find a picture real quick and um I'll be I'll be right back okay y'all so here I have this picture of my husband and I let's say that I wanted this picture to be inside of our Christmas stocking template right what I would do is I would take my picture make sure that it's in front of our outline and I will drag it out so that it is slightly larger than the actual template like so okay select both the picture and the template modify panel and then you want to click on crop okay you see how we can see the entire stocking now and every angle is filled with with our picture that's what we want I don't like the placement here on this stocking so I can come here to the fill panel which looks like a little paint palette and then I can click on these dots here which is the fill pattern and I can let's see I can scale downwards but if I scale downwards look that will happen multiple pictures of PJ and I right so let's see what this aspect ratio does okay and then I can click on pan pattern and adjust the placement of our picture. Okay, and let's see. You know, you just play around with it. You play around with it to get how you want it to look okay and that's how you will add an image inside of your template that you create it's that easy y'all it's that easy so I'm just gonna bring this over to the side and now we're going to work on the template that excuse me the design that we are going to be sublimating. So let me zoom in. This is of my nephew. He is a couple of months old and this will be his first Christmas. So I am using a small LED stocking that I purchased from singlejays.com. They have different sizes and this template and this design is for the smallest stocking that they carry, okay? So the dimensions that I came up with is 12.997 in height by 9.282 in width. You want to make sure that those dimensions match your stockings, okay? So you always want to go in and measure your substrates, always. Even if I provide you the measurements that works for me, you want to go in and confirm that those measurements will work for you, all right? So this is the design that my graphic designer Jazz made for me. I love her. She is literally the GOAT when it comes to this designing game, period. <laughs> I love her. And um, thank you so much, Jazz. So now what I'm going to do is add in a text. So I wanted to say my first Christmas. 
and now um, I want it to look like this I can have it up here or I can have it down here I think I want it up here though so I'm going to show you what I did I came over here to the text and I typed out my let me fill in this color y'all I don't know why I don't know why I don't got my, my color fill um child all right so I'm gonna text click on text so I'm gonna type my first Christmas right and then I'm gonna click on the text again and then I'm gonna head over here to where it says the textile panel which will provide you with a bunch of different fonts that you can use um, I'm gonna use the Alexandria script font I believe I got this from the font.com and this is what it looks like so now I'm gonna click on the offset panel which is the little star I'm gonna click on offset and then um, you can select the distance that you want you can have a large offset you can have a small offset I'm gonna change my distance to 0 0.050 and I'm gonna click on apply and then I'm going to fill in the offset with a white color remove the red outline and while I had everything well I had everything selected I would select everything again if you deselect everything by mistake like me so right click um, select everything right click and then click on group so now everything is grouped together I could leave the color on the inside just like this because it matches my design but I want it to be a dark blue color so what I did was actually I'm gonna leave it this dark like this 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 color blue it looks black but it's actually a dark blue so I'm gonna leave it this color but if you wanted to change the inside color of your text right you can just simply ungroup and um, here the fill panel you can take this this is called a property dropper if you have business edition or designer edition you can select it and you can choose any color that's in your design right so let's say that I wanted this color blue this color blue is now here so I can click on my text right head over here and change the color or I can click on my text click on the property dropper and change the color okay that's it so I'm gonna zoom out and whoops I'm going to delete this and we are going to use this one so I'm going to place this on top I'm going to resize it okay this looks pretty good let me put it in the middle okay and this is ready to print so to print I'm going to click on file print print again sawgrass print manager preferences I only need one copy my size is 11 by 17 media my orientation is in portrait and my pixel density is 300 dpi okay apply print now we're going to wait for sawgrass print manager to come up here is our print manager we're going to click on materials and then we're going to select our substrate so i am going to be sublimating a polyester Christmas stocking however <laughs> I am not going to choose polyester as the substrate I'm going to select metal 
the reason why I'm going to select metal is because when we select metal as our substrate option, when we head over here to our print quality section, we have the option to select advanced photo. Because we are working with an actual photograph of a baby, and in this case, flesh tone, we want to ensure that our prints are going to have the best results after we sublimate, the highest quality results of the actual photo. If we were to select any one of these options here, we will not have the ability to select advanced photo. Now I have tested this out on other substrates. I will select polyester and then I will select high quality. And then I will head over here to our color option and I will keep my color mode at photographic. The print will come out crazy looking, very wonky. And even after sublimating, the, um, the image was not good. It was a not a good high quality result. I believe that Sawgrass is aware of this and is trying to correct it. So please note, anytime you are working with an actual photo, an actual photo meaning any photographs that was taken with a professional camera or any camera, you want to select metal as your substrate, even if you are not working with metal, okay? And you want your print quality to be advanced photo, okay? So now I'm going to um, select my paper type, which is the text print art paper. My source is my bypass tray, and I'm going to have mirror clicked. Then I'm going to just confirm that my layout is all good, and which it is. My job is all good here, and my color, we're going to select again photographic and then we are going to click on print before we begin to supplement our Christmas stocking, I wanna show you how to measure the stockings. I know that I mentioned early on in the video how to measure, or at least I tried to explain how I measured it, but I think that if I gave y'all a visual, it would be easier for you to understand. So I have my stocking here. Again, this stocking was purchased from singlejays.com, and I measured the width here at the top, the width here at the bottom, and then the height. So I take my measuring tape and I measure the width like this, right? I have the width down here and then I have the height, okay? Now with those three measurements, I take my rectangles that I draw out in Silhouette Studio and I size those rectangles according to these dimensions and I make them slightly larger, just a little bit larger so that'll give us some extra bleed room to press, okay? And that is all to it, y'all. So now we're gonna head over to our heat press and press this out. Here is our printed image. And here is our LED Christmas stocking, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to align our Christmas stocking with our design. You also want to keep in mind this plastic piece where the batteries go. This cannot be near heat. If the heat touches it, it will melt and ruin the entire thing, okay? Also, this hanging part right here, I'm going to put a few strips of heat resistant tape just to cover it because I do not want any ink on that part, okay? So I'm going to align my design up like so. And if you follow the instructions in the video, your alignment will be 
close to perfect. <laughs> so I have my Christmas stock in there. I'm just going to take a few pieces of heat resistant tape just to secure it down. Okay. And I'm going to add one also right here in the middle. And remember, we're gonna add tape here on the string, the, hang the hanging part, because I don't want any ink on that. Okay. You wanna make sure that it's really covered. And I'm gonna add another little strip. Okay. piece right here nah we're good we're good okay so this is what it looks like once it's aligned we have enough bleed room for a nice full bleed sublimation stocking okay pieces of copy paper on the bottom the bottom flatten just to protect our bottom of the heat press from any ink I'm also going to take another piece of copy paper I just uh, cut it in half and I'm going to put it in the inside of our Christmas stocking to prevent any ink from transferring onto the back of the stocking okay this like this and I'm gonna cut the excess and place it in on the other side as well because there's a little piece that hasn't been covered so I'm just going to place this over here just like so, okay? Now I'm gonna flip it over so that the transfer is facing downwards and the substrate is facing upwards, okay? I'm going to slide it a little over to the edge of my heat press because remember, this battery part needs to hang off of the heat press. It cannot be pressed, okay? So you wanna make sure that you have your battery part hanging right here. Let me zoom you in. Right here, off of the heat press, okay? That is very important. We have our press set to 385 degrees and we're going to press it for 60 seconds medium to firm pressure okay so i'm just going to increase my pressure slightly and then we are going to press just double check i just want to make sure everything is in my heat press and that my little box is on the outside okay increase the pressure just a little bit Okay, there we go. Five more seconds. Okay. All right. So now it's time for the reveal. I'm going to zoom in slightly. And let's see.
gorgeous. Gorgeous. Very nice. Very nice. This is what the stocking looks like. Very nice. I'm going to get up close so you guys can see. Very cool. Very nice. Beautiful. Now I'm just going to take off the copy, take out the copy paper. You can see that's some ink transferred. And I also have a little bit of ink that transferred onto our tape there that's on the hang, excuse me, the hanging part. So I'm going to remove that. Okay. And here we have it. Here we have it. Gorgeous. I am very satisfied with it. Now, I do notice that I have a little bit of white right here. I didn't align that up 100%. Good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some fabric marker, black fabric marker, and just go up along the edges there. Okay. I have some fabric marker that I purchased from Michaels. It is by Art Minds. And that's what I'm going to use to cover the white edge here. Now, honestly, it really don't matter because it's not that, that noticeable, but I'm a perfectionist, y'all. <laughs> and I be wanting things to be close to perfect. So, I just wanted to throw that out there. So this is the one that I'm going to use. Okay, I just was checking to see which tip would be better. And I like this tip. So I'm going to use this one. And I'm going to maybe this way so y'all can see. And I'm just going to just color it in. Just like so. Now again, you don't have to do this. This is a personal preference of mine. Because I want it, you know, a nice clean edge. There you have it. No more white line, okay? This is what the back looks like. Okay, so no ink transferred the inside. Okay, so we did pretty good. Now it's time to put in the batteries. Okay guys, so for the batteries, you are going to need three of these Duracell batteries, 303, 357, and 76. I purchased mine from Staples, but they do have them on Amazon, so I will leave the link down below for you. You will need a total of three, okay? Get this open. Okay, so here's the third one right here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little box, okay? There's a little piece right here, excuse me, right here in the front that allows you to open it. Okay, just like so. You are going to take the batteries and you are going to align them up or place them inside as you would put in any normal batteries, okay? Well, I'm gonna try to get this on camera, y'all, but two. Oh, you see it lights up? Look at how cute. Let me turn it off real quick. Okay, I can't turn it off, but whoops. 
let me um get these batteries and then i'm gonna come right back all right y'all so here we have our beautiful christmas stocking i finally got them batteries inside i'm not even gonna hold y'all putting them batteries inside was not as simple as i thought it would be i struggled real bad <laughs> but nonetheless we we got it done there's a black button that allows you to adjust the speed of the led lights and that is all y'all that is all we have a beautiful christmas stocking look at that i love how this resulted i think this is absolutely beautiful and i just love the fact that it's led as well i don't really see too many led christmas stockings around so i really love that we were able to create our very own if you enjoyed this tutorial please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my youtube channel also, please be sure to turn on the notification bell so that you can be notified every time your girl uploads a video. Thanks for watching. Later.